Let's start! This is a three-round fight for the Venator Fighting Championship Welterweight Division. And now, introducing the fighters. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man is making his debut in professional mixed martial arts. Standing five feet, 11 inches tall. Weighing in in 171 pounds. Fighting out of Italy. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting Andrea Il Barbaro Fusi! <laughs> Fighting out of the red corner, this man holding a professional record of three wins, one loss, standing five feet, 11 inches tall, weighing in at 117.2 pounds. Finding out of Italy, ladies and gentlemen, presenting Stefano Paternal. The referee in charge, Andrea Bruni. Well, it's Andrea Fusi in the dark brown with the white and gold trim there, Paterno with the uh, light brown, I guess that is. But uh, Fusi with the cheering section over there. He, he brought a crowd with him today. Looks like he's fan favorite tonight. Walter Waits in the cage. We are underway. Just looking at the two guys, Fusi looks like the more powerful man, a little bit more compact frame. He's taking the center of the cage. And, and one thing Paterno is doing that I'm not a huge fan of is stance with wide elbows. Leads you suspect to the body shot and the body kicks. Really wide elbows. Here you're right as he circles to the right on the outside. I can just tell by Fusi's stance, he's looking to load up a big right hand stance as low. He's got that right hand high. That thing is coiled and he's really looking to fire it. You can see he's cutting the distance there. Stefano Paterno with a low kick. Paterno trying to get some range with that kick. Comes in with a leaping left, left hook lead. Fusi still controlling the center early. Really trying to cut off the cage. Into the clinch they go. Turner's got double double underhooks, looking to step across, hit that outside trip, looking to pressure Fusi against the cage, and Fusi's having none of it. Good job, Fusi spinning off, staying upright for now. Paterno still with the body lock. Paterno needs to drop his hands to his lower back and squeeze his hips in to get that outside trip. Meanwhile, you can see Fusi sprawling up against the cage, trying to stay upright. You know, Fusi doing a good job with his takedown defense, keeping his feet parallel with the fence, which makes Paterno work a lot harder to get that takedown. There's the chance there for Fusi. They want their man to battle off the cage. Paterno happy to control things right now. Fusi really trying to pummel hard and get that left hand underhook, circle off the fence. Lowering levels a little bit, does sneak in a little right hand. Yeah, Paterno doing a little dirty boxing, doing a good job, holding on one side, punching with the other, making it dirty, making it ugly. Good way to get a guy to open up and get the takedown. Lucy doing a good job, as you said, pummeling, staying upright. But Paterno the one controlling the action. Now Fusi circles off the cage. The inside there. Paterno fighting really hard to maintain that clinch. Fusi wants none of it as he did a good job exchanging in that close range in the pocket, but Paterno just did a good job crashing the distance and getting a hold of him again. You said it, that dirty boxing on Alicia Lebetta driving through for the takedown. Great timing on that double leg. Fusi was getting a little carried away with his hooks. Way to shoot under his hands, perfect timing for a double leg takedown, and now he's in top position looking to do some damage. Fusi in full guard underneath, working the close guard right now, right in the center of the cage. As you said, Paterno, top position. Let's see what kind of game he's got from there. Does have the two submission wins to his name. Both of those came via rear naked choke. And now he's working from his opponent's close guard. If I was in Paterno's corner, I would be screaming for him to open his guard and really look to either create a sweep or just get to his feet. If you, if you close your guard at times, the guy's going to posture up and do damage, and you're going to get yourself trapped in that position. He needs to open his guard, look to sweep, or make a move to, to hit a stand-up. 
Yeah, great point. Fusi there on his back, working that close guard. Now he opens up for a couple of heel strikes to the back, but not a lot of options available to you. Oh, Paterno postures up and lands some big shots. Nice pass, right into side mount. North south position. Can he slide around to take that back? You can see Fusi holding that leg, trying to prevent the spin. Looking to get the front headlock position, but he bails on it for a tie clinch. Looks to land a oh, oh, big jumping knee. knee. There. And now Fusi's in on the double leg, looking to get on top. Fusi the one looking for the takedown. Looks like he's inside. Yes. Big lift. But a nice little roll there. Oh, almost, Paterno was almost able to roll through that. Paterno made the mistake there as, as Fusi got in on the double leg. He bent over and locked his hands around the waist. And that made it easy for, for Fusi to get his hips underneath him and lift and get that double leg slam. So a little bit less than one minute left in this opening round here. Fusi has been on the bottom for most of the round. Now he's on top. Can he get enough points back to, to steal this round? Because you got to think right now, Paterno's ahead on the judges' card in this frame. Paterno's definitely ahead on the judges' card, but the, the end of the round is where you make the most lasting impression. And right now, that's what Fusi's doing by maintaining top position, but now he's in trouble. Looking to get a triangle choke from the bottom is Paterno. Yep. Left leg is on the shoulder. Obviously, he's up against the cage there. Not, not, doesn't have a lot of room to work. Fusi needs to posture up. He, it's, it's, it's a common mistake to keep your head down and your butt up because you think that that's going to that's gonna alleviate the pressure from that triangle. But he needs to posture up, break the lock, and he's out. Final seconds of this opening frame. Welterweight action. Andrea Fusi finishes around on top. Stefano Paterno looked good early on. Mike Chiesa, who you got now? You know, I'm going to have to take Paterno. You know, he, he, he initiated the first takedown. And, you know, even though he was on his back at the end of that first round, he definitely had a, a legit submission attempt, and he had Fusi on the defense for the better part of that round. I agree. As we watch some of this action from this opening round, you can see where Paterno was the one controlling from the outside. The dirty boxing, as you said, Mike, was very effective early on, and there is when he drove through for the big takedown. Yeah, you know, Fusi got a little overcommitted on some of those hooks and just left a perfect opening for Paterno to get in on the legs and get a takedown. Fusi was able to get that big slam at the end. If you're making adjustments for Fusi, I mean, do you assume that Paterno's probably going to try to take you back to that clinch position? Yes, I think Paterno's going to go back to the clinch, and if I was in Fusi's corner, I would say throw a few more uppercuts. Throw a few more uppercuts because you, you know he's going to look to get that double leg again. So let's throw lead hook, right uppercut, try to catch him. All right, welterweights in the cage. Venator FC3, Andrea Fusi in the dark brown with the white and gold, Stefano Paterno in the light brown. I would definitely say coming out for the second round that Fusi looks to be the fresher fighter. Paterno looking a little tired, looking a little weary, but that might just be a product of my own judgment. We will find out as this round gets underway. I may go with Olive with Paterno shorts. I don't know, light brown might not be. I said great at first. Right. All right. Superman punch there to get things started. He's got the deck of cards. That's what should be. Oh, a little slip there from Paterno. Right back into that clinch position. Yeah, and this time he's doing a good job using that left underhook. And, you know, he's fighting for head position while being able to strike with that right hand and dirty box. Really has Fusi on 100% defense. You mentioned earlier, Mike, in the first round, the foot position on the sprawl there parallel to the cage. That's a very important part to staying upright. Yeah, very important, and it makes, it alleviates the work you have to do. When you keep your feet parallel when you're defending takedowns against the fence, you're not having to carry your weight. The fence is carrying your weight, and it's going to make him work while he's exerting energy. You're pretty much resting. Quick little pick to the ground there. Slick move from Paterno. He moves right into the half guard. Good job by using his left hand to pull him away from the fence so there's no chance for him to for him to wall walk and get back to his feet. Much earlier takedown here from the turn. Let's see what he can do from top position. Fusi tended to work that close guard in the opening round. This time he's in half guard. Still keeping it pretty close there as well. Fusi needs to pummel with his left hand and get that underhook, get a single to come up to his feet, but he rolls for a leg lock back to his feet. And now throwing those big hooks, as you said. What an exchange. It's now Fusi driving in, looking for the single leg, switches to the double. And see, watch how he easily gets this lift because Paterno kept his feet, didn't get his feet in line with the fence. He had him perpendicular. It made it really easy for Fusi to get that takedown. Very powerful slam from Fusi, who thus far has shown resiliency, being in bad positions, getting himself out, and moving himself to the top. I think Fusi's one of those fighters where it takes a punch to wake him up. It takes a takedown for him to battle back and want to get the takedown. It's never necessarily the best way to go about things, but he's on top and it's working for him. You see how his base is in this top position. He really does seem like a compact, strong man. You know, putting all that weight on, on Paterno can't feel good. No, definitely can't. 
He's doing a good job staying tight, really putting a lot of top pressure on him, not giving him a chance to shrimp out and get to full guard. Now he does work to full guard. It's the way it always works, as soon as you say it can. <laughs> <laughs> You're always one step behind. We're at the halfway point of the second round. Paterno's worked himself to full guard. He is working the open guard, looking to move up, looking for options. Now Paterno looking for one of my favorite sweeps, very basic, that Kimura sweep. You can see he sat up on his elbow, which made it really easy for Fusi to trap his wrist and bring him back down. If Paterno wants to hit that Kimura sweep, he needs to post up on his hand to give his hips more space to bump him and roll him over. Definitely looking for options. Seems like Fusi's pretty happy, just kind of... You know, old school ground and pound, just stay right in the guard. He doesn't really appear to be looking to pass. He just seems happy to stay right there. Yeah, he's doing a good job, hands on biceps, posturing up and, and doing damage when, when he creates windows. And right when, right when uh, Paterno is looking to hit a sweep, open his guard, he crashes back down, gets his hands on biceps, and resets. Probably not a bad plan for your professional debut. You know, stay a little conservative if you need to, to, to really establish yourself in that top position. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's a wise move to make. You, you might, this moment might get you overexcited, over resilient. You might, you might uh, take some chances and bring yourself out fast. So I think he's got a good approach going into this fight. But now he's defending an arm bar. Lexi Paterno trying to turn out for that arm. Briefly has the left wrist trap, has to let it go. Big punches from the top. Lucy answers with a, couple, with a little left hand, right hand combo from the top. Doing a good job posturing up and doing damage. The Il Barbaro cheering section, loving that. Boy, this place filled up real fast. I just looked over the <laughs> section where they're cheering for him, and holy cow, it's full. <laughs> the, the Peroni Garden emptied out, they filled into the stands. Absolutely. And we got Paterno is stuck on the fence. Fusi's on top of him, throwing big blows. Paterno needs to take this opportunity while he's against the fence to wall walk and get to his feet. He needs to take advantage of being against the fence. It is not, it, it, people have that misconception that being against the fence is a bad place to be. It is not. It's a good place to unlock your guard, walk to your feet, and get this fight back, back in the stand-up position. 40 seconds left in this second round. Started out in Paterno's favor, but Fusi has been enjoying top position for the latter half of this frame. I'd say he's had control for at least three minutes for sure. To ask uh, fight metric. Ragazzi, about yeah. the fight metric. Get on there. <laughs> Big shots there from the top. Fusi just working in the elbows, the forearms. Big right hand as well. Paterno working that open guard, looking for options. Final 10 seconds, but there's not a lot there for him right now. No, there definitely isn't. And he's he's letting the fence be a disadvantage to him by trying to go for submissions. He should really be working on getting to his feet. All right, does get to his knees there right at the end, but it's a little too little, too late. Second round, Mike, I, I got to admit, uh, assume that's going in Fusi's direction on your scorecard. Oh, yeah, definitely. Clear cut, 10-8 round for Fusi. I mean, he got taken down in the beginning, but answered back with a takedown of his own and really controlled the top position, did a good job posturing, shutting down all of Paterno's attempts at sweeping and going for submission with good posture and good positioning. There was that early action as we watched the replay where Paterno was the one to get the fight to the ground. But Fusi used that leg lock and... To sweep and it's an opportunity to get up. Leaping left hand right into a double leg. I like it. And then here with these big shots at the top, just looks like a big, strong, powerful man when he's in top position. And I see him in the corner. He's he's kind of smiling. He's talking to his corner. He still looks pretty fresh. Paterno's doubled over there a little bit. You, you kind of wonder, you know, what which guy has more in the tank right now. I got to see You know, I definitely I would say Fusi by a long shot. He looks fresh. He's got a smile on his face. Pretty sure he just looked over here and winked at us. So I'd say he's <laughs> he's in the zone. He's ready. He's ready to take this uh, third round over. I think I got this 1-1. I got it 1-1 as well. Andrea Fusi in the uh, dark brown, the uh, the white and gold trim there. Stefano Paterno in the yeah, olive the gray. The, uh, the venom. The venom. We'll go with the venom with the with the with the cards on there. Referee is going to take a second to. Uh, Wipe them off. I, I think this fight hangs in the balance. It's, it's, it's going to be a gut check for these welterweights. Andre Fusi again, remember, making his professional debut. Yeah. Let's see what he does in a pressure situation like this. You know, and if I was Fusi, just judging by Paterno's uh, body actions, the way he's keeled over, looking tired, I would really look to push the pressure on him, really push forward and just break him. Paterno on the outside right now, trying to work that jab. As you said in the very opening round, Mike, those wide elbows. Yeah, he's really suspect to a body shot. And while he's fatigued and showing that he's tired, one body kick can really change this fight. Yeah. Instead, Fusi decides to drive inside. Why not? It's been effective for him. Big lift. <laughs> Every time. There we go. 
Boy, he has no problem just grabbing you and elevating you. Just a physical specimen. And, and Paterno's making that mistake. He needs to use that fence to get to his feet. He's posting on his elbow again. I'd be telling him post on his hand. Oh, but it was Beautiful he sweep. gets the Kimura sweep. Immediately into Mount. What a turn of events from Stefano Paterno. Now he's the one grinding away from the top. Oh, Fusi gives up his back, there bad position. And now Punch is coming in from the back, trying to soften things up. Paterno's got both boots in, looking to suck his hips in. The right arm is under the neck. Can he get it under the chin? Doesn't quite have it locked up yet. He's a little bit high. He might crank the face, but he took his hips away, and he got a tap. Wow. Incredible performance by Stefano Paterno. Was in trouble there. Was able to get the sweep that you pointed out. Beautiful sweep, then got to the back, got the arm around the neck, and as Mike Kiesa can tell us, you don't necessarily have to have the arm all the way under the chin to get that finish. No, definitely not. You know, you just got to stay gritty. You got to stay tough, and, and ultimately, you start squeezing the head, it's going to slide down under the neck, and, you know, good job of being resilient, staying stubborn. You know, as I was saying in the broadcast, use the fence to get to your feet. Don't be so stuck on getting a sweep or submission, and ultimately, his game plan worked out for him. He got the sweep, got the submission. That was very impressive because as we were watching him before he came out for that third round, there's no doubt he was exhausted. Yeah, he was tired. You know, to me, you know, if I was on the other side of the cage room, if I was Fusi, I would see a fighter that's looking a little bit mentally broke. I was wrong. Here goes the uh, replay of the final action. You see Fusi got that early takedown. Looked like it was going to be a great spot for him as he got that slam. Set up in top position in his professional debut. Probably thought, I'm going to cruise my way to the, to the end. Instead, the turner got on his back. Yeah, definitely got a nice, it looked like a really nice palm-to-palm -palm short choke there. Sucked his hips in, having both legs in. Great win for Paterno. Let's take it up and get the official time of the stoppage. The referee has called the stoppage at 1 minute and 15 seconds of the third round. Declaring the winner by rear naked choke, Stefano Paterno! Choke. Andrew Fusi falls to 0 and 1 in his professional debut, but uh, saw a lot of character there, and I'm sure he'll be an asset for many years to come here on the Italian Stay tuned here at the Palacesto in Milan for more Vintour FC3.